in a beautiful little coffee shop called Elroy's. We've just had uh, some Elroy's coffee, owned by an Aussie. And From Perth. I just heard this Aussie accent ordering a coffee. And That's good to know that I've still got an yeah, Aussie yeah. accent. <laughs> I go home and my family say, you don't sound Australian <laughs> at all anymore. So I'm excited that I still have one. And we started chatting and it turned out it's Mia Fields, who's a Christian singer songwriter. Uh, used to do a lot of work with Hillsong, written a lot of well-known songs. And I interviewed her on the radio years ago. And she doesn't remember, I remember. And I thought, wow, let's have a quick chat. So tell us a bit of your story. For those who don't know, how did you end up over here? Okay, well, I was writing for Hillsong. Um, I wrote for them for about 10 years, and probably about five years in, I was like wondering if they were being nice to me and I could write songs, or you know, maybe I couldn't. So I, I started coming over to Nashville just to try and write outside of my circle. Mm -hmm. And I, the first trip I came over, I only knew three people because I'd been to a conference over here to talk about songwriting. And I'd met a girl called Carrie Job, a guy called Paul Balosh, and then a band called Desperation Band. So that was the only people I knew. So I just emailed them and said, hey, this is so random, but if I come over to America, would you guys want to write a song? Like, and they were all like, yeah, great. So we did that and then I, I went home and Paul used a song and then Carrie used a song. So I kind of took that as a green light from God. So I, for, for about four or five years, I would spend all of the money I was, like any money that I made off songwriting, I would spend on coming to America to write more songs. And then after a while, it just got very expensive to go back and forward because I was doing about four times a year. So then um, I moved over here in 2010 and I've been here ever since. Mm -hmm. Very and cool. Writing songs because that's what I wanted to do with my life. Yeah. And it's nice to be doing that every day. Yeah. And I know that there's been many songs that we've probably sung in church or we've heard on Christian radio uh, that uh, you would have co-written or, or written. Um, is is Tremble, is that one of the songs that you, you wrote on? It sure is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's one of my favourites. Yeah. Well, you know, actually the song is, um, so I was sitting in a conference and um, Erwin McManus was preaching and I was going to be writing with his daughter like two weeks from that conference. And he was preaching about creativity but he talked about how he has night terrors and like like has nightmares and whatever and I just felt like man we should write a song about that you know we should write a song that's like a breakthrough song for him and I didn't actually you know tell his daughter anything but I went into the right thinking mm. you know she can sing over him like David did mm. and um, I actually didn't tell her the song was about about that moment until about a year later mm -hmm. and then she said actually I have night terrors too and we were just talking about how like the power of worship to break that off you know mm -hmm. so it's kind of what this, this song is about like just getting free at like mm. from fear at night you yeah know? yeah very cool so and is there other well-known songs people might have sung or heard on the radio that uh, you can name drop for us because I've, I've got some in my head but I just can't remember it's so it's so weird with people like, like list them off yeah, um yeah. you know I, I write kind of like half worship and then half um you know Christian radio so um one of my favorite stories is uh, a white like you know it's years ago now but um my friend Jonathan reached out and he was like hey I was at home in Arkansas and I met this guy and he's like six four or six five and he looks like a lumberjack and doesn't have a deal and he's he's just a cool guy and I, I want to bring him to Nashville to write and um the guy was actually Zach Williams and the first song we wrote together was Chainbreaker which was like I, I love that song and I love that story because I love what God did with his life you know just like from from God plucking him out of obscurity yeah which I think God can do with anyone and, and his story is such proof of that that yeah. you'll be faithful in the hidden and God will will find you out yeah. wherever you are yep so I love that story um, mm. I guess recently like you know one song that was a big song that had quite a journey is a song called Peace Be Still um, Hope Dust Hope Dust yep, yep. yep. <laughs> which you know again another story of God plucking you out of obscurity mm. that, the funny thing was is so that, that was kind of one of the first songs that Hope um, had kind of written in a co-writing environment um, and it was with her and actually um, one of the worship pastors at our church The Belonging Co and um, we wrote that song and then the song actually we did it at church and Lauren Daigle carried it and then you know Hope you know has a powerhouse of a voice and she'd always kind of wanted to sing it and it was funny because like for four years like God kind of let her sit on it and then God 
you know, during COVID, it became like such a big song on the radio mm. and just a, such a sweet moment mm. of like full circle moment for hope as well that like God hears and God sees and God remembers and he's going to do it in his time, yeah, you know? Yeah, so, so, yeah. So, cool. Well, awesome to connect with you today. I know you're busy and we don't want to take up your time, but isn't it awesome to see the Aussies over here? You I know, mean, the picking and country boys yes. and Rebecca St. James. It's amazing, isn't it? And know? most of them you will find at this coffee shop. This coffee shop, yep. okay. This is the place to be, all right, cool. Yeah, absolutely. And, and of course, Henry Seely uh, and his wife is a car. Alex. Alex, Alex, Alex yep, Seely, yeah. From, um, uh, I, I remember listening to him on uh, Youth Alive South Australia when I was a kid. Oh, I remember Youth Alive South Australia yeah, stuff. Sometimes I'll bring it out with him and I'll do a few little Youth Alive South Australia yeah, things. Yeah. But, they're amazing. Yeah. Pioneered an amazing church here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've definitely been there since um, yeah. the beginning with yeah. them, and yeah. just to see what God has done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. And look who's over here too. Jordan's over here. Jordan Grace is going to come over in the interview as well. Right. Hey, bro, how you doing? G'day, mate. Good how you to going? See you, mate. We're on the video here too. <laughs> Have you guys met before? No, hello. Yeah. Hi, Jordan. Jordan yeah. Grace. So his Just dad's maybe. a guy named Steve Grace, who's a singer in Australia. You know? I know Steve yeah, Grace. Yeah, yeah. This, this is Jordan. He's Grace, an awesome. Southland, Holy I Spirit. Yeah. I know. I literally yeah. live live just around the corner. You live around the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. We all we all live just around the corner. Yeah, and he's got a band called Sky Pilot, but he How travelled cool. around Australia with Will Graham and Amazing. the Billy Graham Association. So we, we better stop the interview because yes. I've got to catch up with him next. And, Amazing. But, Really cool to meet you, you again. You've got like the best spot in Nashville to come and meet 